Hello, this is Don Hall. This is at Don Hall Works YouTube channel. And in this video, uh, I'm going to do sort of a basic thing, maybe for some more ceramic newbies kind of people. Yeah, very simple. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to make a plate, a fish plate, and I'm going to make some bowls. And uh, unique, unique kind of bowls. I hate to say fish bowls, but... Uh, to do it, we're going to use a stencil I cut out that makes this shape right here. And so, let's get started. All right, I'm getting ready to make a slab so I can make these uh, plates and bowls. Now, you can do this in other ways if you don't have a slab roller. For beginners, you probably don't have a slab roller. There's an earlier video I made called uh, slab Roller 101. It'll show you simple ways to make a slab and you don't need to have all this fancy equipment. So I I put some clay down here in a slab roller and I changed my mind. I decided I'm going to make this fish. It's a little larger and uh, I'm going to make sure that it's when I roll this out there'll be enough clay here to make this fish I'm going to roll this through and get started. All right, I rolled it through and it looks like it's plenty big enough for my fish. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this texture from the canvas of the slab roller off using a straight edge. Then I'm going to put my fish down. Now I can make it go to the right or I can turn it over and make it go to the left. Doesn't really matter. I'll put it this way. We can see it. And this fish is going to be a plate. It's not going to be a bowl. So what I do is I I follow the outside of my stencil here. The stencil was cut out of some good quality paper that holds up pretty good. There we go. There's the fish. I'll get rid of this excess. Roll it up, this excess up, and I'll use this for the next one I do, which is going to be a bowl. All right, so I have the nice fish on here. I'm going to transfer it over to a board just so it's a little easier to work with. I can work, put it on my workbench and start turning it in, into a fish by using a slump mold. There we go. There's the fish. I'm going to have to clean this side off as well. Now I'm ready to uh, go to the next step. I use various circle stencils to draw a little pattern on my fish. I did it very gently with a needle tool just to make a little scratch that, so I can see where I want to go. What I have now is some underglaze and a, and a line brush that uh, makes a nice line. I'm just putting this on here so that you can see better and also that uh, once, once I get it slumped, it's going to be curved and it's easier for me 
to draw on this while it's flat. All right, so you get the idea. I'm just painting over that uh, line that I drew with my needle tool. And I, I made the lines on there to, uh, so I can paint it later, decorate it later. I'm gonna make it a, sl here's my mold I'm gonna use to slump it down into a plate. And I know approximately where I want it to be by that line. I also have a line on my bat that I'm going to use. And then I flip it over. And press it down. And now we have a form of a plate. I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to put a foot on here. I'm going to do it two different ways. One that requires a potter's wheel and one that does. The first step in order to uh, make a foot is I roll out a uh, little snake like this, drop it one time, so I have a, a one flat side, and then I run a little slip on there and score it. And so that's ready to, to become the foot on the bottom of the plate. Got the plate now where I want it on my wheel going to lock it down by putting some clay around the edges. Don't want it to be sliding around on the on the wheel while we're doing this. That should be enough. It's locked down. I put a little uh, Gordon slipped it, I'm gonna put the foot on. Now I always like to make a little bit more than I need so that the way I'll cut it off is like this. I'll cut it at an angle and I can see exactly what I want to do here. There we go. Put that back together. If you cut it at an angle, it gives it a little bit more clay to stick together. It works better if it's just a little bit damp. pretty good. Usually what I do now is I go around here just so I know I got a nice tight fit and it won't uh, it won't break loose from the plate. Just, just gives it a little bit more room to stick to each other that way. Now I'm pressing down this way with my finger and on these fingers I'm kind of squeezing. One squeezing, one's pushing down it so it's a little battle going on there, how it's gonna look. But anyway, that's all you need to do right there. And uh, now my fish plate has a foot on the bottom. Here I am, I'm putting down the first coat of underglaze on my fish pl uh, plate.
is the fish plate with four coats of underglaze on it and a nice thrown foot on the bottom ready to be fired in the kiln. It occurred to me while I was making this video that it's October is only a week away from Halloween and maybe instead of making two fish, uh, one fish plate and one fish bowl, I would make a fish plate and a jack-o'-lantern bowl. So I did what I just did before. I took, rolled out a slab. I uh, made a stencil of a jack-o'-lantern, cut around it, and I'm going to put it on a different kind of a mold. This is a mold I made out of plaster that I put in a big round bowl and it makes beautiful bowls. So here's my jack-o'-lantern. I'm going to put it on here and let it be nice and rounded. Got to take a little time. Make sure you get it all nice and tight on there and it stays put. And you get it where you want it. So now I'm going to show you how to make a different kind of a foot using uh, once again a made a little snake and I'm going to make some feet Now, when you do this I'm going to measure so I get them about the same I want three feet if you use three you uh, your bowl will lay flat and it won't rock. If you put four feet on it, oftentimes it won't sit quite right. I measured and cut my three feet. And then I centered this. I made sure everything was even. I spun it around, make sure that I, the center of the plate was in the middle. Then I took a needle tool and just made a light line around here to give me an idea where to go. And now I take my three feet and I put them evenly apart so they sit right in the middle of that line. I come back around and make a, another mark around each foot Then I use this tool to just sort of dig it out a little bit where the foot's going to go. I've discovered that it, if the foot has a nice little seat to sit in, a little indentation to sit in, it will stick in there and they won't fall off as easily little slip and a little scratching, a little hatch, hatching and I set the feet where they belong right in the middle of that line and scratch that one All right, now I just give them a little gentle push in. Then I take a flat board and set it on top and force it down a little bit, which will make the feet sit flat on the table. I'll take a brush and clean this up a little bit and there you go there's a bowl three-legged bowl of a pumpkin next step decoration what i've done here is i've given this several hours to dry out and now i'm putting it some underglaze on to decorate my pumpkin it's nice and stiff and 
Remember, when you're using underglaze, you have to figure out it's going to take at least three coats of, of color. Uh, some colors, it'll take even more. Oranges and yellow seems like, boy, five coats is probably the right amount. There's my jack-o'-lantern with two coats of black. It's going to need at least one more, but I'm going to start on the orange now. And like I said, orange, orange and yellow are two colors that are underglazed. It really takes several coats. I'm guessing four or five coats of orange should be about right. Here's my jack-o'-lantern with three coats of orange and three coats of black and obviously it needs a couple more coats of orange to get it nice and bright. I'm just putting on the final touches of black on my pumpkin bowl. You can see how this works. There it is, my finished pumpkin bowl with three feet on the bottom, ready to be put in the bisque fire. Well, there they are. They're done, ready to be put in the kiln fire. The jack-o'-lantern bowl and the fish plate. If you enjoyed this video, please think about subscribing to my channel at Don Hall Works YouTube and comments and are always welcome. Thank you.